What we talk about in the financial independence community runs very counter to the general culture because the general culture is one of spending everything that you earn. It's, you deserve a break today. This fancy car will make your life better. This bigger house will impress your neighbors. Uh, and there's a lot of money to be made doing that. And so it is a relentless message that is sent to us through advertising. You see it in movies. You see it in the lifestyles that are portrayed as what you should be living. So yeah, I think that the path that is generally laid out by the culture, and by the way, not in a, in a sense that this is some grand conspiracy, but in a sense that companies are trying to sell their products. And one of the ways they sell their products is to make that product seem like an indispensable part of your life. By a part of your life that, that by spending money on that product, your life is a little better and it's something you deserve. There's no kind of conspiracy there. But there is a, a cumulative and insidious effect that makes people always look for satisfaction and happiness and joy in, in spending their money. And again, the research is pretty, pretty uh, definitive that that's not where happiness comes from. And people who buy a new car, as an example, enjoy the new car for a short period of time and then it's just the car. Buying extra food doesn't make us happy beyond the moment that we're that we're eating it. Buying your freedom, which is what financial independence is all about, to me at least, is a much more profound uh, way to spend your money. It's a, a much stronger route to happiness because once you buy your freedom, then you can choose your path in a way that, that you can't before. But clearly the overall cultural message that we're fed uh, is counter to this. There is a very powerful financial incentive to market and sell products. It's what makes our economy go around. And part of that, there's a, there becomes unintentionally, but a cumulative effect of constantly barraging people with the idea that happiness is tied to owning this thing. Oh no, wait, you have to also own this thing over here. Oh no, oh no, wait, you need to have this over here. Um, and I think unless you take the time to sit back and say, well, what's really valuable to me? You know, what do I really want to spend my, my, my money on? Um, but we're not encouraged to do that. It's not a suggestion. And so it shouldn't be terribly surprising that, that most people, it doesn't occur to them to do, to do it. Um, and, but I think once you start doing that, and especially when you put it in context of, well, can I buy this fancy car or can I buy more of my investments and therefore buy more of my freedom? So I had a conversation with a, with a woman who, who said, you know, Jim, the problem I have is I was raised to spend money. You know, I was raised in a fairly wealthy family and spending money is what we did. And this idea of not spending money to invest it just runs counter to everything that, that that I was raised to believe and that I'm comfortable with. And I said to her, well, maybe you should think about it just slightly differently. You're still spending money. It's just instead of buying that car or that wardrobe, you're deciding to buy your freedom. And the investments that you're buying are the way that you buy your freedom. Now, it's your money, and this is true of everybody who sees this documentary. It's their money and they can spend it on whatever they want. For me, there was simply never anything that was more valuable, that was more important, that was more desirable to spend my money on than my freedom. And so when it became a priority, then becoming FI became a, a pretty easy and, and natural thing. But every now and again, I'll sit, sit with somebody and say, wow, I really like this idea of being financially independent, but of course, I have to live in this house in this neighborhood and it has to be furnished in a certain way and I have to lease these two cars and I have to send my kids to these. Well, that's great. It's a matter of priorities. But understand that if becoming financially independent and buying your freedom isn't at the top or very close to the top of things that you have to have for your money, then you're never going to have it. And that's okay. That's your choice. It's your money. A lot of people it is sexier. Buying, especially when you when you put it in terms of sounds sexier than buying your investments. 
when you say buying a BMW and continuing to work in a job that maybe isn't rewarding or even worse is soul crushing, is that sexier than buying your freedom? Well, for some people it is. For me, not so much.